with releases. The first thing a receiver's got to do is read the DB's technique and body language. Now, when we game plan a team, we'll have about a 20, 25 questionnaire about the DB's technique. Do they play inch, pier step, whatever it may be? Are there, are there certain formations, motions that get them in press, outside of press, whatever that is? We're going to study it so our guys have a foundation of knowledge prior going into a game plan. But the thing you got to do is study their body language. Not every receiver has the ability to work every single release. You might have a 6'3 guy that weighs 205. He can work most releases. But a 5'9 slot, he's probably not going to be able to work a gangster release against a 6'2 DB. So you got to play to your skill set, and you got to know your skill set. Always have a plan of attack and know the counter off that. Understand where you got to be when that QB's foot in the ground, whether they're playing quick game, drop back. If he's taking a three-step drop, you got to understand where you got to be in your route when that foot hits the ground. Also understand you can't work a dive release on a comeback. All that stuff plays into effect. We always talk about attacking half the man, getting him off his spot. And now as DBs, they're going to read your hip to your back leg. So you see all this stuff on TikTok, Instagram, all these different releases where guys are wasting five seconds at the line of scrimmage, not getting anywhere. You got to be a threat to the DB. So we say, okay, they're going to read your hip to the back leg. Now they're playing inch. We're going to have different ways how to beat those techniques. But if you just come to balance with that first step, they're not threatened. But if you drive somewhere because your back leg's moving towards them, now they're in a threat. Now they got to play. Always stay tight to the man. You might beat the man in the release, but if you just run around him, now you're in trouble. So we say shave the hip. Your hip should shave his, staying tight to the man. And we talk about it lane one, lane two, lane three. It's like you're in a track race. You start in lane two with a release. At times you can go into lane ones and lane three, but at the end of the day, if you want to win that race, you got to get back into lane two. The primary releases will work. We have a list of that. Again, not everybody's going to be able to execute that because of their skill set, and we'll have drills. The first one we're going to do is just a club rip, club swim. So we got the crayons. My graduate assistant does a great job for us, Brad Aoki. We're just working a club rip. So these, we'll have footwork and we'll have hand combats, but we'll kind of break it up before we put it all together so guys can create a plan of attack that works for their skill set. So you can just see on my go call, working our club rip, high and hat, active hands. Now working the club swim. Now we'll do a release drill twice a week, but in spring ball, fall camp, we're going to do this almost every single day. The way it works, you're going to have a cone five yards apart. You're essentially going to work from the hash to the sideline. Now, does it, is it in the DB's favor? Maybe, because they're not defending a route. It's not like you're doing one-on-ones. But it just, it's an emphasis for us receivers that you got to win on a vertical release. And you got to work with full speed movement. You can't waste time going laterally three yards because now the route's going to be disrupted. You're not going to be able to win. So you can see we're in our drill. Good job. Working vertical to the DB. Now working his hand combats. Okay, club, swim, get back on top. Shave the hip, stay tight to the man. Okay, DB's out. Club, swim, get that hand off you. Now, the weakest part of the DB's hand is two inches above the wrist. So if you can break that part of the hand, now their DBs aren't going to be able to hold on to you. A gangster release. With a gangster release, all you really want to do is you want to shock the DB. You do not want to get in a hand fight. Also read their body language. Is he playing on his heels? Now it might be an opportunity to gangster him. But if he's got heavy forward lean, probably not the best time to gangster him. So all you're going to do is just shock and swim. And so now we're working with our boxing gloves where they can just shock you. And this is a good job by our ex down here at the bottom of the screen working a gangster release. Because, better believe it, you work a release like this on a guy, he's definitely going to be playing different as the game goes. Bigger body guy, 6'2 and some change, 220 pounds, he can use that release. 
Back to our release drill. Okay, DB's playing on his heels. Okay, go get him. Game over. Same thing. Release drill. Same setup. On my foot. Periphet. Working vertical. Gangster him. Get back to it. Staying in lane two. Other release we'll use, okay? Just working our quick chop, our pull through, or our pull, pull, chop. Because DBs, you can go from two to one to one. You got to understand how they're going to play so you can get the hands off you. So you can see, we're going to go our pull through, and now we're going pull, pull, chop. Because as they transition, they're going to work down to the hip, so you want to pull, pull, chop. Speed release. It's just like in baseball, right? If a pitcher's throwing a fastball at 100 miles per hour and you can't hit it, you don't need to throw your change up or your curveball. If they can't defend a speed release, why go to your curveball or your change up? Have those in your bag in case you need to go to them, but with the speed release, it's almost undefeated. And especially against pier step, that's how you beat it. You got to go with the speed release. The technique we say, it's almost as if you're picking a tennis ball off the ground. You want to eliminate surface, stay skinny, but you got to get somewhere with that inside hand in that back foot. Our one, two, and three step counters. Understanding is an inside route, outside route, okay, working a one step counter. Now, two step, now two step counter, working outside. But this isn't a good rep here because we talk about. Staying tight to the man. Shave the hip. If he's in lane two right there, he's ending up in lane one, not going to be able to win the route. And then a the three-step counter right there. So it's a good job here. He's just working a three-step counter. Foot fire, we call it tic-tac-toe. Good job stacking the man, getting back on top. Now the Z, working a two-step counter. Good execution there. Able to win his one-on-one. -on -one. Good execution. Pop halves. Pop halves, you're working half the man. Okay? All you're essentially doing is taking six inch steps, working vertically and laterally to half the man. Once his weight's stuck on that inside foot, now he's beat, open up the gate, now we take it. So we'll drill this stuff in the off season. Like those clips last year were from February. Now we're going to transition this. Now we get ready for spring ball, March and April. Now we're bringing that from our off season drill work now to our practice. So you can see it's a good job by one of our freshman receivers working the pop has. He could stay tighter to the man though. Again, got him. But you can see he's trying to run around the guy. This guy's beat off that step right there. But if he just stays tight to the man, now he's going to have a better chance to win that route all the way.